same ire, the same suspicion and rejection that he met before he was lifted upon it. And the rulers of the world would cling to their power, nurture their pride, and do all they could to preserve their positions of privilege and authority. And the people, the people would align themselves with power and with law and with strength and with armies. And then what would our king do? Would Jesus arm his followers, marshal his own army, and storm their palaces and their temples, destroying the threat to his kingdom and setting himself upon the pinnacle of world dominance? I mean, think about it even in our day. What would it take for Jesus to be king in our time? Would people listen to him? Would the superpowers of the world listen to his message of a peaceable kingdom of God any more now than they did so long ago? Would Jesus, the world king, get anywhere if he dropped in on the North Koreans and commanded them to voluntarily hand over their nuclear weapons? Or if he visited the insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan and demanded a complete ceasefire? Or if he died in the White House and called for an immediate doubling of humanitarian spending throughout the world? Would he get anywhere? I don't know, but I doubt it. Such a king as those Roman soldiers knew so long ago was a, an entirely different sort from the king they saw enthroned upon the cross. That king upon the cross knew that his power would not be realized in the ways of the world, but would only be realized in another, perhaps unexpected way. Sometimes, I think we just want Jesus to take care of everything for us. Like that thief on the cross who just wanted to be saved. We want Jesus to overwhelm the circumstances surrounding our lives and with a miraculous wave of the hand make it all right. Topple these evildoers, make people do the right thing, give us comfort in our families, force us to love our neighbors. I mean, can't the world just be good? And only good. But there is a great difference between compulsion and love. There is a difference between coercive power and love. There is a difference between codependency and love. A king who would feign to attend to all our needs while removing our own responsibilities and choices is no king at all. He is an idol or a tyrant. And maybe sometimes we think that's a easier. Yet not all things will go forever as we would wish. Some would never be fully satisfied without the hearts of the people, without their deliberate and decided love and devotion, even in the midst of hardship, such a king then is doomed to pass away, to become no more than history or legend. What of Jesus? He could wow the peoples by stepping down from the cross, but he could not win their hearts forever by what he did on that single day. I think Jesus knew that a king who built his kingdom on such fleeting moments could only come to a dead end. Such a kingdom would not withstand the test of time. But he knew also that there was something that does. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never. Today, this final Sunday of the Christian year, we celebrate Christ the King. This King did not choose to serve his own interests, or revel in his power, or overwhelm his enemies by force. This King chose to stay upon a cross. We believe it was for the sake of love. We believe that he offers that love freely as a gift. And we, in turn, have the power to offer the same to others. How, then, would people know about Christ the King? Well, through the testimony and the actions of his loyal subjects. As Jesus was sent forth all the hand. Okay.
age and all that. But it's some things. Some people are, are simple and sad. A little sadness. Maybe so. This is Tech Plus Practice on Cure. Practice on Saturday. Not much of a break. Hope you all learned to utilize Tech Plus. Or to give. There's only who can give. Uh, for ourselves. For our talents. For our love. For our hearts. Maybe we all learned the Bible as the God and Santa Claus. And they're probably going to keep peace on earth. They won't come back. Okay, it's getting late. I've got a lot of Christmas shopping to do. A lot to do. You work at home too. And remember, behave yourself. Santa Claus is still looking for a match to send the seeds of what you're up to. Just remember. Just remember. Santa Claus is coming to town. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and he's checking it twice, he's gotta find out who's daughter or nice, Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I tell you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. With little tin horns, little toy drums, Rudy Toot Toots and Robbie Tom Tubbs, Santa Claus is coming to town. And curly haired dolls at Tall and Coo. Elephants, boats, and kitty cars too. Santa Claus is coming to town. The kids and girl and boy led will have their jubilee. They're gonna build a toilet town all around the Christmas tree. Oh, you better watch, uh, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming to town. Do do.